Hi everyone, this is Jesse here from SkySib, and today I just wanted to do a quick video talking about the concept of prying, and how it's included in our quick design bulk group capacity calculators. Now, if you haven't seen this tool before, we have three different versions of the tool. The American version, which I have open right now, and if I click this toggle down option here, we can also change to the Australian version or the European version of the tool. So what is this concept of prying? It is an increase in tension forces than we'd otherwise expect from a static analysis on our bulk group. So what I mean by this is if I had four bolts and I had a total tension force of 100 kilonewtons acting um, in the out of plane direction, I might expect to get 25 kilonewtons shared between each of these bolts. But in reality, what's going to happen is a plate's going to deform and that deformation is going to result in increased forces on each bolt so that the total sum of those forces might be greater than the 100 kilonewtons that I'm originally putting in to this bolt. Now, how can we calculate these forces, um, given that it's related to how the plate's going to deform and the relative stiffness of this plate compared to the bolts. The way we can do it in the American standard and in the European standard is using something that's called the equivalent T-stub method. In this method, um, and I'm just going to quickly change the drop down so we can get the right image. In this method, we're going to have some kind of stub in the middle. It could be the web now I-beam, it could be a welded plate or some other kind of steel connection that's going to add stiffness in the middle of this plate. And this is going to be where our tensile force would be passing through. So, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a section through this plate and we're going to get our equivalent T-stub. And it's called this because when I draw the um, section, we're going to see something like this, um, which is our T-shape, an upside down T by T-shape nonetheless. And if we were to um, draw our bolt here, draw a bolt here, and consider our tension force in the middle passing through this stub, um, what we would expect, again, is we'd expect these guys to take um, a force equal to this, if, if like for example I had 100 kilonewtons acting on this total section and I have my 50 kilonewtons acting on this stub and I'd expect 25 on each side. But in reality what happens is our plate deforms, the deformation maybe we expect it to look something like this, bends, um, bends like that, and through this bending we get a bit of compression forces in the corner here, or on the side here. And that compression force, you know, could be a number, we need to calculate it um, through some method, could be any number like that, 5 kilonewtons. And if it was 5 kilonewtons, then that would result in a total force um, you know, acting up of 65 kilonewtons. And that would mean that this guy, sorry, total force up 60 kilonewtons, and that would, that would mean that this guy is taking now 30 kilonewtons. So we're going to need some kind of calculation to work out how this bending on this section is going to increase the forces on our ball group. And there's different calculations and different standards. We can just quickly it's join. We can just quickly run through this calculator with these default inputs. Oh, here I'll put some inputs in here. We can run through this calculator with its default inputs, and we'll see um, how this uh, stub is considered in our prime calculation. So if I scroll down through the calculations, we're going to get our standard, um, you know, shear and tension strain calculations. But then when we come down to this section here, we're going to have an additional consideration of how prying uh, is considered on this bulk group. And this is coming from the American Institute of Steel Manual Part 9 for the American tool. And we'll see our calculations here. We just go through um, this calculation. In this case, we've uh, basically calculated that no uh, like prying is ne needs to be considered. Um, or we can just take the original tension force. But in some instances, we of course would have an increased tension force um, on the group. What I'm going to do actually is I'll just change to the US version of this tool. And we can see the similar um, similar inputs. Um, here we can go to the vertical stub and we'll have our stub thickness and our weld size on the side of the stub. And so um, when I run this, you can see a very similar section. i scroll down, um, which is based on section 6.24 of this European standard. So here we have, you know, again, more complicated calc, slightly different. Although the concept's the same where we have this T-stub, um, it's the same like concept overall between the US and uh, the Europe. European standard, although they are the same in concept, the calculation is quite different. Um, in this case, we have three different value mechanisms that get considered, and we take the critical um, force between, the critical strength between these value mechanisms. So here, um, what we end up in with is we end up with a strength for an individual bolt. So some of these calculations actually um, consider the strength of the whole bolt group, but then just to bring it back to this one parameter that we're always looking at consistent, consistently through the report. We change this back into a individual volts strength, and that just makes it consistent with our other tension calculations and makes it easier to compare across 
um, all the different calcs that we see throughout this report. So then we can get our utilization rate for the crying effect. And again, we can do a combined utilization check, um, which might be which would be more critical than the combined utilization check without the crying effect considered. So um, that's how the European standard would take care of that. With the Australian standard, um, I'm not sure if I've said this before, but there's no equivalent T stub section uh, kind of calculation in the Australian standard. The Australian standard just says to consider prying, but gives no guidance on how to calculate um, this prying effect. So for the Australian version, we just have, um, don't go too far, we just have this prying factor here. And so with this prying factor, um, the Australian Guide for Structural Engineers just recommends a value of 1.1 for rigid plates and a value of 1.2, so 1.4 for flexible plates. And all this value does is just increases the um, tension force that we calculate by this factor of 1.1. So if, for example, we had that 50 kN load like before on our stub, and we had 25 kN on each bolt, then in that case, we'd say that the prying, um, the results in tensile force due to prying would be 25 times 1.1 for whatever it is, 27.5 kN. So we can also use that simplified um, calculation for the other tools. Maybe we don't have some kind of stub. Maybe we just want to increase it by some nominal value um, to take care of it. Um, in those cases, we do have the simplified method as well. But we also have the vertical and horizontal T-stub methods. So that's all I wanted to cover today for the bulk group capacity calculator um, talking about prying. I do have some other videos you can watch talking about concepts like how forces are distributed or doing some example calculations. So if you want more content, you can have a look at those videos. Otherwise, if you have questions about prying, feel free to leave a message down here in the chat um, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can or the team will get back to you as soon as we can. And if you have any other questions about the software or anything at all, you can also message us here.